Hello everyone, welcome back into this word. I am always really excited to give the word of the Lord and share what it is that he put on my heart. And I tell you like every single day, I go before the Lord and my prayer time with him and I give thanks for all of you. And not only do I give thanks for all of you, but I give thanks to God for what he's doing in your life. Uh, specifically just by being obedient, just by being uh, humble, just by being faithful, and just by yielding to the Lord. I give thanks to him for what he's doing in your life. So I love you all. I just want to start by that, by saying that. And I'm excited to share what the Lord placed in my heart today to share with you. So I want to talk to you about how the Lord wants to bless you. And he wants to bless you in a way where um, you don't have to receive a blessing and then go back to where you were before. And I think that's one of the things that we see a lot in traditional church to where, and I'm not going to talk too much on this, but one of the things that we see a lot in traditional churches is to where someone will go up to the altar and they'll receive, you know, they'll, they'll give their testimony and then they come back a couple months later and they're giving the same testimony or they're back in the same situation. That, like, yes, the Lord wants to bless you, and the Lord does do that. He does incredible things, but his will for your life is that, you know, he blesses you, and he sits you in a place to where you're constantly receiving from God. You're constantly in a place where you don't have to worry about ever, again, in your life, the things that you're going to eat. You don't have to worry, or the food that you're going to eat. You don't have to worry about ever a day in your life, the clothes that you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about having clothes on your back. You don't have to ever worry about having a roof over your head. You don't have to ever worry about having a peaceful place to sleep. This is the will of God for you. And this is in his word, and it tells us, you know, I'm going to take you there. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This He's giving us the, the literal keys in his word. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no, therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto today is the evil thereof. So he's saying every single day that you wake up, the Lord is going to provide your bread, right? The Lord is going to provide you daily bread every single day. You don't have to worry about it. It reminds me of the, the children, uh, the Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> who went through the wilderness. The Lord was telling them, like, you don't have, like, you know you don't have to save this bread for the next day, right? Because I'm just going to provide more food for you tomorrow. He was telling them, like, look, don't store up this food because I'm just going to give you more tomorrow. The Lord is saying every single day he's going to make sure that he provides a roof over your head. He gives you clothes on your back. He gives you food to eat. You don't have to worry about it. This is the will of God for you, not to where he just blesses you and then you go back to struggling again and then you have to seek the Lord again. Like, no, the Lord is to, to constantly, the Lord wants you to dwell in a place where you are constantly receiving from his kingdom. And I think it's very interesting that when you start talking about receiving blessings from the Lord, it triggers a certain group of people. And I don't, I, I think it triggers that religious group. I think it triggers the religious group of people who believe that they have to do a certain religious routine every single day. Um, and if they fall off of that routine or if they don't do certain things that the Lord isn't gonna bless them. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I'm gonna have to seek the Lord on that because I really, firmly believe in coming on here and breaking the chains off of you all that the enemy has placed on you. And really, it's a mental thing, right? That's what it is. That's what the soul is. The soul is the mind, the emotions, and the will. And the enemy desi desires to desires <laughs> to hijack your soul, right? He doesn't own it. The enemy doesn't own anyone's soul. God owns everyone's soul. He decides where it goes, right? He decides what happens to it. But the enemy desi desires to hijack a human soul. And we are the ones that gives him the permission to do that. And he wants to put someone in utterly and complete darkness in their mind so that he can allow his agents of darkness to move within that person's soul and get them to do his work on the earth. But we speak against that. We cancel that right now in the name of Jesus. But the Lord desires for you to be his vessel, can be, can be completely yielded to him, right? The word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. This means... That you're completely yielded to God and his kingdom, to God and his agenda, to what God is doing on the earth, and you don't have to worry about any of those things. And it shouldn't trigger you. It shouldn't trigger you to understand that the word of God says that he doesn't desire for you to have to stress about what you're, the basic things, the basic things, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what roof is going to be overhead, where you're going to live. This is the will of God for you. And I need you to understand that it's not his desire to just bless you once, 
but he wants you to live in an actual promised land. This is the this is the original divine order of God. This is what he was doing with the Hebrew Israelites. He moved them out of the land of bondage. He moved them out of Egypt into a wilderness season so that he can place them in a literal promised land to where they're constantly receiving from God. They're constantly receiving from God's kingdom. He even provided for them in the wilderness. I talk about this all the time. And it says, I want to take you to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. I'm going to read the first half of this scripture, and then I'm going to explain to you why some people kind of get this scripture a little off. It says, reading from the King James Version here, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Now, some people read this part of the scripture and they say, well, the word of God is just talking about, it's not talking about inheritance here on earth. It's talking about a good man leaves spiritual gifts to his children, children, his children, children. Yes, the, the book of Proverbs tells us how we are supposed to train a child up in the way they should go and teach them, you know, pass the knowledge down. The word of God, you know, it preaches this to us all throughout scripture. But I want to read to you. I want to go down a little bit more on that same exact verse. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. What is that telling us? That's telling us that this scripture is specifically talking about the wealth transfer in the earth that the people of the world have right now. It is the will of God that that is literally transferred over into you who are the just, who is the good man that leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children. But it requires something of you first. It requires that you seek you first the kingdom of God. That you be about, like Jesus said, your father's business. That you do what it is the Lord told you to do. And, and to have that complete understanding is to increase your faith enough to understand that God doesn't want to just bless you. You're on this earth for a purpose that far exceeds you. So to say things and to think things like, I'm gonna, this is gonna, I say a lot of things that I know is gonna trigger people, but I really say it because it's something that the Lord had pressed on me to say, not because I care if it's going to trigger people. You have to understand that the Lord put you on this earth with the purpose that far exceeds outside of you. So to say things like, I just want enough resources to get me through my life. I just want enough resources to get me through today. I just want you know, a roof over my head. I just want X, Y, and Z. Yes, the Lord desires to give you those things, but he also desires to bless you in a way to where it's not just going to affect you. It's not just going to help you. It's not just going to change your life, but it's going to change your life. And it's going to be a domino or ripple effect onto the lives that or people that come after you, onto your children, onto your children's children. And they're going to take you there. According to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. It's not just, the Lord doesn't just desire to bless you and it stops with you. He looks at the bigger picture of your life and the people that are attached to you and the people that are go going to be attached to you that you haven't even met yet. The people's lives who you will affect. It's really important to understand this. It's a very self-centered, selfish way of thinking to ask the Lord to bless you just for you. To ask the Lord to give you resources just for you and not be God-minded. I want to take you to, um, I love backing things up by scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. It says, for who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. This means that I want to draw a warning of distinction here and be very specific. This doesn't mean that we are God's. This doesn't mean that we are God. It means that we have access to God. God is a completely different being than we are. Um, but it means that we have access to the mind of Christ. We literally have the mind of Christ. Where we can go to the spirit of God at any moment in time and say, Lord, what do you think about this? Lord, guide me here. Lord, what are your thoughts on this? Lord, should I do this? Lord, what should I do next? Lord, give me discernment on this. Lord, reveal this to me. Lord, give me revelation and wisdom about X, Y, and Z. It means that we literally have access to the mind of Christ. But I'm going to go up some in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse 13. It says, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teach. So we don't speak in the words which man's wisdom teach. Man's wisdom teaches that you should just get enough for yourself. Man's wisdom teaches that every man for himself. Man's wisdom teaches that you should just look out for you and that's it. No. No, the word of God says that you should love God first and love your neighbor as you love yourself. But there's a certain order that you have, there's a way that you have to look at that because you have to love God first in order for you to uh, effectively love yourself. And you have to love yourself first 
in order for you to effectively love another person. The enemy wants it to be inverted to where um, either you're only focusing on yourself and God is completely out the picture and other people are completely out the picture, or you are focusing on God, other people than yourself. You're putting yourself last. But the problem with both of those models, and I need you to understand me on this and follow me here, is that the first model where you're only focusing on yourself, it's completely self-centered on you. It's, it's a narcissistic way of living and being, and it's in direct alignment with the devil. It's in direct alignment with being a child of the world. The other way is completely out of order because you're putting God first, but then you're putting other people before you. So you're completely neglecting yourself. You're completely neglecting who it is that God has created you to be. You're com you, when you neglect yourself, who it is that God has created you to be, your character, right? The purpose that God has put you on this earth to, people are just siphoning off of you like spiritual vampires. People come and they take everything from you and they leave you with nothing. They leave you as nothing. Then you become spiritually depleted. Then you become emotionally and mentally dead on the inside. The order is supposed to be love God first, then love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you don't love yourself properly, then you cannot love your neighbor. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments. So it says, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, so we can't speak and think like the world's wisdom but which the Holy Ghost teaches, which we, we speak and we think as the word of God teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, rightly divining the word. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Understand this, it's saying the natural man, the person who does not think spiritually, the person who's not accessing the mind of Christ, they look at the scripture, they look at scripture, they look at someone who's living according to their divine godly purpose, they look at someone who's walking in God's divine order, and they think it's foolishness, it doesn't make sense to them. They look at people and they, who are doing the will of God, and they're helping millions of people, and they say to themselves, why do they need, why do they need all of this? Why do they have to do all of this? It's very selfish to ask God to bless you just because you want it, or just because, just for you. God looks at the bigger picture. He's saying, no, how can you use what I'm, how can you take the talents that I'm gonna give you and multiply it? How are, you, how are you going to take what I've given you? How are you gonna take the gifts I've given you and multiply it to help other people, not just you? Let me know if you got that. Um, and it says it's foolishness into them. So they look at people who are doing the work of the Lord and they think it's foolishness. They don't understand it. They don't understand how the kingdom of God works. They don't understand how the kingdom of God works on the earth. When, even though the word of God says that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And it says, but he that is spiritual judges all things that he himself is judge of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So I need you to understand that the Lord desires to bless you far beyond just you, far beyond giving you resources just for you to live a great life. The Lord wants to put you in a promised land and then set it up to where you're able to, like he's able to use you as a vessel to reach other people. Let me know if you understand this. <laughs> so I'm gonna pray for you right now. I love to pray for every single one of you under the sound of my voice after releasing the messages that the Lord gives me to release. And I need you to understand that God is getting ready to bless you. You have to have the faith and you have to understand why he's doing it. You have to understand why he's doing it. He's doing it not so that you can have it for just yourself, but he's doing it so that you can help other people. Do you know how many times, and I released a message a couple weeks ago, I said it's coming around again. Do you know how many times the Lord will give somebody something, the Lord will give somebody resources, or the Lord will bless somebody financially, the Lord will bless someone with a divine connection, the Lord will give someone something, and because they don't have the mind of Christ, like 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 says, you know, that's Paul speaking, because they don't have the mind of Christ, because they're thinking worldly thoughts, you know, from their natural man, from, from their flesh, they believe that they're just supposed to sit on it. They're just supposed to sit on the talents that the Lord gave them. They're just supposed to sit on the resources that the Lord gave them. No. And that, if that's the case, you're replicating the prodigal son. The Lord looks at the bigger picture. So I want to pray for you. 
it's coming around again. The Lord's getting ready to bless you, but I need you to understand why. Actually, before I pray for you, I want you to write down the scriptures. I want you to write down um, and study. I'm going to go back to what I read to you today. First uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse 13 through 16. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, and uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 through 34. And actually, I really suggest reading the entire chapter 6 uh, in the book of Matthew. Uh, but yes, write those down and don't just read it like deep dive. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your heart and your mind, give you eyes to see and ears to hear what the Lord is saying through his living word. So that you get the understanding that God wants you to get, not the understanding that your flesh is just reading. Hopefully that makes sense. So I want to pray for you all. Um, Lord, we, as always, we gather before you on every single message. And we ask that you give each and every one of them under the sound of my voice, the mind of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask that you give them all the mind of Christ so that they can understand spiritual things, so that they can rightly divine your word, Lord God, and so that they no longer operate and think like the world wants them to think, so that they no longer operate and think from their flesh. They no longer ask uh, for things from you, Lord God, from their fleshly desires, but they're thinking kingdom thoughts. They're thinking with the mind of Christ, Lord God. Bring them up to your perspective. Allow them to see the world and allow them to see the kingdom of God uh, because you said in the name of Jesus that um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Allow them to see your will, Lord God, how you desire it to be. Allow them to see the vision that you have on the earth in the name of Jesus. Give them revelation. Give them wisdom in the name of Jesus so that they're able to operate from the spirit of God. They're able to be directed and guided from the spirit of God and not worldly desires or, or the worldly uh their worldly flesh in the name of jesus i ask that if there are any demonic or worldly influence that are influencing them to follow in the way of the world or god that are getting them off track we close those doors right now i ask that they will be able to put up a resistance against the devil that they will be able to put up a resistance against the world so that it will flee so that the enemy will flee so that any forces of darkness that have been trying to infiltrate their soul and their minds, Lord God, it will flee. Let it find no room in their life. Let it find no room in their, their mind. Let it find no room in their soul. Close all access, Lord God. And I ask again that you bring them up to the perspective of God because your perspective, seeing everything from your perspective, God, it is everything. It is everything because it allows you to move through us. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I love you all. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm giving you all an opportunity to sow into this word and put seed into the ground on this word. For those of you who have been seeking the Lord for direction, for those of you who've been seeking the Lord um, on what you should do in your next season, for those of you who specifically, I wanna be very specific when I say this, who have been seeking the Lord for a harvest for a specific thing. I do wanna open the opportunity for you to put seed in the ground on this word. The options are below in the description. For those of you who just want to give, that's below as well. We are doing a winter prep because we're entering into the winter months right now. And so there are a lot of people who actually don't have a place to stay. They're gonna be on the streets during the winter month. If you want to help and contribute to getting as many people as possible off of the streets during the winter months, um, I will put a link below for you to read more about that and how you can be a helping hand in that and support in that. Also, for those of you who are seeking godly mentorship, there is the Promised Land Mentorship that is available for you. It's a 12-month journey. It's absolutely beautiful. All of the messages are on demand that are released every single week. And it's a journey that guides you into um, maturing to the person that you need to be to step into the promises of God. If you want to know more about that, the link is down below in the description as well. And there's a couple of other stuff in the description that will just really bless you. So I love you all. Also, before I forget, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. I don't want, to, I don't want you to miss anything. Um, some of you have also asked about how can you be notified of every time that their messages are being uploaded. If you hit the notification bell, it'll notify you every single time. So I love you all. If you feel led to, share this word, and I will talk with you in the next message.